What if I were to tell you there was a conspiracy among the opponents of Donald Trump to go after him with criminal charges and in other ways to stop him from winning the 2024 election? You'd say, "Uh uh-huh, yeah, I watch the news too. What else is going on? We have a couple of stories. Prominent anti-Trump pundits have been holding weekly meetings to take down Trump. That is to say, these men have, let's just say colloquially, conspired behind the scenes to damage Donald Trump. Well, this one's important because this means a crime has been committed. And I can prove it, my friends. I can prove it. Take a look at this from Just Security. Election fraud, pure and simple. Egad! Trump committed election fraud? Trump's prosecutors move beyond Stormy Daniels in wide lens trial opening. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. You see, Donald Trump in 2015, I kid you not, this is a criminal trial over the 2016 election. But anyway, you see, Donald Trump was concerned that people might hear negative information about him while he ran for president. So what did he do? Well, according to the prosecutors, he told his lawyer to figure it out, stop people from running negative stories about me. And he also was friends with a, um, a guy at a media company. And uh, yeah, so they accused Trump of paying off Stormy Daniels so that she would not make negative claims about him. And they say the crime is not that he paid her off. Of course, that's not illegal. The crime is that he was interfering in the election by suppressing negative news about himself. Uh huh. OK, so efforts to alter or control or display or whatever information pertaining to elections is uh, election interference and fraud. OK, well, um, let's go back to that story. So if you have anti-Trump pundits meeting together, holding weekly meetings to take down Trump. Oh, there. Well, there you go. There's a conspiracy to manipulate information pertaining to Trump. Well, that's a consp- that, that's a crime. I guess we're going to have to arrest all these guys. Wow. Let me, let me play for you this uh, MSNBC clip. You can hear it straight from the mouths of the people who are obsessed with and hate Donald Trump. Frame as you see what we've yeah. heard today. So a couple of things here. The prosecution is essentially looking to lay out the case. And you heard this come up a couple of times in the opening statements today, that this goes beyond simply what we all shorthanded as the hush money trial, that this was about election interference. They did something interesting. They took this phrase that in many ways the former president has co-opted since the 2020 election, this idea of election fraud. And they tried to flip it and use it against Donald Trump in these opening statements, describing what he did as illegal election fraud, that he He tried to cover up, along with Michael Cohen and David Pecker, this, uh, you know, money to cover up an alleged sex scandal. What the defense did was try to take that back. And you heard this very interesting line from Todd Blanche, the lead attorney there for the former president, who said, spoiler alert, there's nothing wrong with trying to influence an election. It's called democracy. Kind of an extraordinary line to hear from the former president's team. Um, And so the defense came back. Blanche said that but also tried to make Donald Trump seem super relatable. And that was striking at several moments for the defense's opening statements, talking about how, sure, he's the former president, but, hey, he's just like us. He's a a father. He's a husband. You know, we're all New Yorkers here. We all get it. Trying to establish that personal relationship with the jury in hopes that that could serve the defense team over the course of the next six weeks there. What I'm going to be watching for, you you asked about what could be new here, and you heard Vaughn allude to some of this. The prosecution has receipts. They're alluding to a tape with the former president's voice on it. They're alluding to a photograph, for example, from the Oval Office in 2017 of Donald Trump with Michael Cohen. They are going to try to prove that whatever you think of the credibility of these witnesses they're expected to call, Michael Cohen, Stormy Daniels, that the paper documents, right, the evidence, the paper trail proves their case. So, Danny, they're going to say the defense is going to say there's no crime here. They're going to do more than that. I mean, they actually opened with he's innocent, which is an interesting choice of words because innocence is not determined at a criminal trial. It's guilty or not guilty. But Mm. sometimes if you feel that your case is particularly strong, you may try to essentially argue innocence to the jury. My client is so not guilty that he's innocent. And they essentially opened with that. We already got a preview and there were no surprises. They're going to point to Michael Cohen as somebody who is not credible. They're going to point to Stormy Daniels as someone who is not credible. Although you could argue that Stormy Daniels 
Daniels is almost not necessary as a witness in this case. Her involvement is kind of tangential. The affair itself is not critical to whether or not it actually happened. Okay, okay, blah, blah, blah. We get it. Now, the reason I want to show you this clip is that the media is actually entertaining this. This argument from the prosecution that trying to do marketing during an election is illegal. And then they go on to say, hey, look, they're, they're going to pull out uh, videos and audio recordings. I bet they're going to have audio recordings of Trump being like, OK, so, you know, we want to suppress this one. It's a bad story. It's not very good. So uh, do what you got to do. And, uh, and that's it. And they're going to say this proves it. What they're doing is rather interesting. The prosecution seems to be trying to jump over the the the, the statutory requirements by going to people and saying, that isn't a crime. Uh, anyway, here's what Trump did. This proves it. So he's guilty. Now, what was that? Well, what he's doing is not a crime. But look, look, here's proof that he did it. You see what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, it's like a sleight of hand thing. It's like, hey, we have proof Trump was trying to suppress this news, right? And then hoping the jury just says, wow, he did do that. Okay, well, the defense is going to be like, yeah, but that's not a crime. Trump didn't do anything illegal. What is he doing here? In the meantime, we can talk about the rest of this uh, conspiracy over here. Prominent anti-Trump pundits have been holding weekly meetings to take down Trump. The Most Millennial reports a new article out of Politico reveals that a select group of lawyers and legal pundits have been working behind the scenes to quash a Trump second term using the media. They've been sharing narratives honing points, and working together to intellectually stress test the arguments facing Trump on his journey through the American legal system. The names of those who have been at these meetings are all too familiar, and the tactics mirror those undertaken in 2020 to manipulate media to sway the presidential election in Biden's favor. Heavens me! Oh boy. Does this mean that if Donald Trump gets uh, convicted, we can lock up all these guys too? If this is the game they're going to play, I don't see why not. Donald Trump gets elected president and then says, remember when you claimed that trying to influence the media was uh, was fraudulent election interference? OK, well, I went on trial for that. Let's say Trump wins or lose whatever. And he says, OK, now the DOJ will use the exact same premise to go after all of these men. Part of me thinks it won't happen. Um you know, Donald Trump says that he's going to go after the, the corrupt individuals and um, perhaps, perhaps I'm not entirely convinced he will. I'd like to, I'd like to see it, but um, I don't know. I really don't know what to expect. I can tell you that Donald Trump is a much better option than, say, Joe Biden. They say the group began their weekly meetings, uh, meeting weekly 2022 every Friday on Zoom with congressional staffers for J6 committee members to coordinate their narrative about Trump and the lawfare directed at him. Every Friday, they meet on Zoom to hash out the latest twists and turns in the Trump legal saga and intellectually stress test the arguments. The meetings were not recorded, were off the record. Those in attendance have various media affiliations. The host of the meetings, Norm Eisen, was a senior member of the Obama administration and has actively worked to get attorneys who worked with Trump during his White House term disbarred. He worked in the first impeachment trial of Trump in Congress and claims that Trump and not Biden will weaponize government against his opponents. Eisen was also co-founder of the D.C.-based nonprofit that brought the case to remove Trump from the Colorado ballot. It is a conspiracy. What they are doing defies the spirit of this nation. And I would argue, you know, if they want to pursue Trump in this way, then certainly it must be a, a criminal as well. Jeff Clark says, I called it a group of leftist legal commentators has been meeting weekly for about two years to strategize about how to bring down Trump using the media. I even coined a term for the phenomenon, journal lawfare, as many followers will well be familiar with. The Politico article admits it, just like the Molly Ball Time article about how they fortified the 2020 election. They always have to brag about what they are trying to do to kill off Trump. Just some of the participants listed here, Tribe, Weissman, Crystal, Conway, John Dean, and Tubin, not pictured, Ludwig. Well, because there are many people who are unfamiliar with Molly Ball's article, I'm going to pull it up. It's always very important to bring this one up because uh, maybe you're new here. 
And I mean that with, with respect. Maybe you're new and you don't really follow the news all that often. Maybe you have an aunt, an uncle, a mom or dad, and they don't believe you when you say you know that there was a shadow campaign to steal the election. They say, oh, get out of here. We don't want to. OK, here you go. Time magazine. The secret history of the shadow campaign that saved the 2020 election. And they write, there was a conspiracy unfolding behind the scenes. One that both curtailed the protests and coordinated the resistance from CEOs. Both surprises were the result of an informal alliance between left-wing activists and business titans. The pact was formalized in a terse, little-noticed joint statement of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the AFL-CIO published on Election Day. Both sides would come to see it as sort of an implicit bargain, inspired by the summer's massive, sometimes destructive racial justice protests, in which the forces of labor came together with the forces of capital to keep the peace and oppose Trump's assault on democracy. I love that. Trump's assault on democracy? Yo, y'all are literally admitting to business titans meeting behind the scenes to engage in what you describe as a conspiracy and all to stop Trump. Let's talk about democracy. What we are supposed to have is a democratic institution which is how we vote for our representatives, not on bills. You know, we do have um, propositions in some states. No, it's supposed to be that uh, we vote for our representatives and then they go and handle government. So that's as far as our democracy goes. If the argument is an election is when one man uh, or one person argues their ideas seeking your approval via vote, then we did not have that in 2020. Donald Trump won the argument, but he lost the election and he lost because Democrats won the game. And that is get as many pieces of paper with names on it as possible. So a lot of people voted for Joe Biden, mostly because they hated Trump, some because they didn't care. Ballot harvesters go knock on your door and say, just fill this out, you know, or I'll come back tomorrow. And then uh, people do. You get a bunch of activists showing up at your house every day saying, did you fill out your mail-in ballot? And you go, no. Well, we'll be back tomorrow. And they're like, dude, fine, whatever. I'll just fill it out. Here you go. A lot of these people probably would not have voted, but the ballot harvesters came by and knocked and said, there's a ballot right there on your floor, came in your mailbox, just select Biden, give it to me and, and we'll collect it. And that's legal in most places. Now they're calling it election fraud. Let me tell you about election fraud. Take a look at this. We'll start light. Hush money judge angrily scolds Trump, suggesting he tried to intimidate prospective juror. I will not tolerate that. This this one was pretty shocking to me. What did Trump do? He muttered something in trial. Trump was muttering an audible while one juror was being questioned, the judge said. And he said, I will not have any jurors intimidated in this courtroom. Wait, wait, wait what? What do you mean intimidated? For all we know, Trump was, look, they don't even know what Trump said. So let's say a juror is being questioned and Trump goes, oh, I need to get a, a pastrami and rye today for lunch. Maybe probably some barbecue chips. And then the judge goes, hey, Trump, don't you intimidate my jurors. I don't think he really said it like that. But, you know, I'm, I'm giving you theatrics. Let's say the judge said, Mr. Trump, you will remain quiet in my courtroom. I will not have you intimidating jurors. The judge is poisoning the well there. We don't know what Trump said. Trump could have been sitting there muttering something about SNL. We have no idea. He could have been muttering literally anything. He could have said something like, I can't believe this case. What is going on in this country? That's it. Nothing about the juror, no threat to the juror, nothing. But when the judge says out loud, I will not have any jurors intimidated in this courtroom. What he just said was, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Trump is trying to intimidate you. He created that context. Now that is creepy. But wait, there's more. Phil Holloway Esquire says, Judge, Judge Mershon is denying Trump's request to subpoena documents from Stormy Daniels. Trump's lawyers believe these documents would show bias against Trump and prior inconsistent statements. These are fair game for cross-examination. Mershon is kneecapping him. Yes, duh. Surprise, surprise, the Democrat judge in the Democrat, uh, in the Democrat district uh, overseeing a criminal case in which no crime was actually committed is not allowing Trump to get the documents that um, he could use to help prove that they're all to get him. I mean, the funny thing is, I don't know how Trump proves his innocence in a case when there's no crime committed. Let me, let me try this again. How does Trump actually 
prove a negative. Like nothing happened. There's no crime. There's no statutes. There's no laws. And Trump's got to be like, I didn't do it. You didn't do what? I don't know. Trump's like, here's the thing. Trump's going to be like, uh, yes, we actually did try to suppress negative information. That's not illegal. Aha. So you admit it. This is the crazy thing. There's no law broken. That's it. No law was broken. What are we doing here? They're just trying to destroy Trump. And, you know, I, I, I talked about this last night, but I'm going to say it again. And it's kind of a scary thing to say. The Democrats crossed the Rubicon. It's not Trump. So I'm, I've made the argument over and over again. I'll make it again. Trump should not be at trial. Tomorrow is the Supreme Court oral arguments. I believe it's tomorrow on uh, immun uh, presidential immunity. And I believe Donald Trump must be there. But the judge has said if he goes, he will be in contempt. I think Trump has to go. I don't know exactly how it would play out. Trump has to be there. Let's start here. The office of the executive for this country is more important than a contempt charge against Trump. Trump now has to make a strong leadership position decision. Will he stand up for this nation or will he stand up for himself? And I believe this may be the test they wanted Trump to be put through. They want Trump, terrified of 30 days in jail, to skip the oral arguments, show up for court, proving that he will kneel beneath a judge and he will not stand up for this nation because of the risk to him. I think the Democrats want that to be the case. They want to say to the world, when it came time to defend this country, Trump said, I'm going to try and save myself. Now, I believe there's strategy, there's legal strategy. Trump's lawyers are probably giving him advice. So it's hard for me to say exactly why Trump is doing what he's doing or what he should do. But I believe from the outside, at the very least, with the limited information I have on his legal strategy, he needs to be at SCOTUS. He has a duty to this country. He wants to be the president once again. The question of presidential immunity will ring forever. And if Trump isn't there, it says a lot about what he cares about. I will start here. Is the president immune from criminal prosecution? No. Is the president immune from criminal prosecution pertaining to his official duties? Yes. Only until he is impeached and convicted. That seems obvious. Barack Obama killed a 16-year-old American citizen, Abdul Rahman al in an airstrike. He signed off on it. Has he been criminally charged for this murder? No. He would have to be impeached for it and convicted first. But that won't happen. Because politically, Democrats and Republicans don't care that the U.S. is engaged in drone warfare and foreign conflict. And foreign war is admittedly very different from domestic, you know, like if Obama walked down the street and shot someone on Fifth Avenue. Yeah, lock him up. They'd probably come up with some reason to not do it, though, which uh, brings us to where we are now. That's why there is presidential immunity. Now, Donald Trump is arguing that what he was doing pertaining to the election and election fraud was related to his official duties. And well, the unfortunate thing is he's not wrong. The executive branch handles law enforcement. If the, and, and, you know, he's in the, 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 uh, the election. If there are questions being brought up pertaining to fraud and questions of impropriety, the president absolutely must and it's a, it's a, it has a duty to do it. That's what the executive is supposed to do. It'd be better if he wasn't involved. But if you look at Georgia, you had Raffensperger, who was, I believe it was Raffensperger. Maybe I'm mixing up, mixing up the names. But you had, he was Secretary of State. Let me make sure I get this one right. Was it, was it Raffensperger? Raffens. Um, I think he was Secretary of State for Georgia. Uh, he still is. And uh, who am I thinking of then? I'm th I think I'm thinking of someone else. Who's the, the whoever is governor now? Who's the governor of Georgia? It was Arizona and um, what am I, Brian Kemp. All right. Brian Kemp was the yes. OK, it was Kemp, not Rav is the, the right now. OK, so he was the secretary of state overseeing the election in which he became governor. And they all got really angry about it. Well, Katie Hobbs in Arizona was secretary of state overseeing her election. Like, this is where we are now. There's, there, there's no game you can play. If the Democrats and the Republicans are doing it, I'm not surprised Trump's doing it. Now, the question is, 
There's two questions. Were Trump's actions related to his official duties? I think the answer is yes. It's an it's it's it goes both ways. It was it was his personal. It was personal. It was his election. But it also is his duty to do these things. Too bad. It is whether it involves him or not. It is the executive's branch duty to investigate these things. The next question is, does the president have immunity? Trump needs to be at that trial. Tomorrow's the day. I think that if Trump goes and the Democrats have him arrested on contempt charge charges, they will burn themselves to the ground. And maybe that's what Trump will do. I don't know. We've talked about it on Tim Kest IRL. Many said, nah, Trump is going to just, he doesn't want to go to jail. He'll show up to New York trial and he'll skip the oral arguments and he'll argue he doesn't really need to be there. His lawyers can handle it. I, I don't accept that. He's not going to be arguing himself. But the former president asking this question should be staring at each and every one of those Supreme Court justices when this question is posed. Will he do it? I honestly have no idea. I think that may be the plan, because if Trump doesn't go, you know what they're going to say. They're going to say Donald Trump, it's his own fault. He's facing criminal proceedings. And because of his personal corruption was not there at the Supreme Court. He could not even stand up for this country because of the crimes he committed. That's the message. Think about the inverse. Trump goes to SCOTUS and he sits. And Judge Mershon says Trump is going to be held in contempt for skipping trial today. And then Trump goes back to New York. And before he walks in the building, he says, ladies and gentlemen, people of the United States, it is my duty as the former president asking the question of the Supreme Court that I attend these arguments. And I understand this means the judge here in New York will try to hold me in contempt and jail me. But whether I'm jailed or not, means very little compared to whether this nation can survive. And that's why I did what I did. I went to SCOTUS to be there and be present for an argument that could shape the very fabric of this nation, knowing this corrupt judge may try to put me in jail for defending this nation. So be it, I say. Imagine if Trump said that. I don't think he will. <laughs> I honestly have no idea. I don't know if Trump would be that, um, I don't know, precise, but we'll see, I guess. The big question comes tomorrow. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.